some of the palette. What's up, guys? Hey, Steve. What's up, Sebastian? So, um, yeah, I got my, um, my iPad out so I can see your guys' comments and stuff. So, um, I'll try to answer stuff as well as I can. Um, it's definitely going to be a little more of a challenge to try to paint and talk, but uh, I'm going to try to walk you through the process a bit and then um, just kind of get into the painting. So, it should be fun. I'm excited for you guys to see it. I know you, some of you have seen me do this at the ISCA convention, um, but now I'll be doing some of my pet portrait stuff. So, all right, I think it's just about four o'clock. So, all right, I'm gonna. All right, everyone can see that. All right. I think it looks somewhat clear. So, first off, I want to thank uh, Iska so much for this. This has like been so cool seeing everyone's process videos and just kind of what their home life is going on right now. Um, I've been a little stir crazy myself, so um, something like this is kind of cool to to engage with everyone. And uh, then also give you just a little more insight on what I do. Like, this is when I'm doing commissions, when I'm working from home in my studio, I'm doing this kind of work. It's all encaustic. So, um, so first off, I kind of want to talk about what encaustic is. It's, um, it's this process, it's a painting process where you can, it, you can do collage, you can do um, you can paint with it, you can do sculpture, um, kind of a lot of endless possibilities that you can do with it. But for me, I just like to paint with it. So as you can see on the right hand side over here, I've got all these little tins. And inside all these tins is beeswax and oil paint. So it's actually, this is all wet and it's hot. So th this is like a griddle right here. and you heat up the beeswax till it's melted and then you keep it hot so when you go from from here from my palette over to the the board or whatever it dries like almost instantaneously so it's uh, it's pretty cool if you um like cause a lot of times when i work with oil paint it's just like it's so wet all the time it, i mean acrylic dries but this i feel like you're i'm able to be very like responsive in my painting where I can I can paint in one stroke or I can use a scraping tool to, to scrape off everything if I want. Um, it's, it's this really fun back and forth. It's like, um, I don't know, for me and the way I work, um, it involves the sketch and it involves collage, it's uh, painting, it's drawing. So kind of all of my favorite things, it's all in this one thing. So that's, that's pretty much why I love it. Um, and um, it's, you know, it might not be for everybody. I mean, I don't, I'm, if you're a painter, I think it's very interesting and you can really develop some cool textures. Um, also over here too, um, in, in this right here. So this is just the beeswax itself. So you can see there's some beeswax and then you also have to mix in a little bit of damar resin so it's about the ratio is 13 to 1 so 13 beeswax to one damar resin and that just kind of makes it a little harder so you have to mix it in there and stir it up um but yeah this is what i use and that's why i put into these little tins for my palette all right so I have, um, this is my friend's, friend Natalie's dog that I'm doing a, a painting of. Uh, she doesn't know that I'm doing this, so it's kind of like a fun thing. Um, so I just already pre-sketched the, the drawing on the wood. This is a wood panel 
um, encaustic adheres onto the, the wood. You can't do it just on plain canvas because uh, it needs to be like a hard surface. And it can't be an acrylic surface either. So it needs to be like, you can get, they have acrylic, not acrylic, they have a gesso that's for encaustic that you can do, but acrylic is plastic base. So plastic and beeswax don't mix. It just doesn't work. So you can only mix with oil paint or oil um, sticks or something like that when you're making your palette. So the first thing I'm gonna do um, is I, I got my sketch on here. Um, I wanted to do something, I love this face. It's got so much structure into it. I know, you know a lot of you are caricature artists, but this isn't exactly a caricature. It's got some caricature influences because I am a caricature artist. It's just in, in me now. So when I do portraits even, there's still that kind of uh, understanding of likeness um, and emphasizing things like crucial parts that I want to bring forward. Uh, I'm going to do that in this piece. So, and <clears throat> the way I paint and draw too is almost kind of um, architectural or sculptural, and that's the kind of feeling I want to get across. I want I want it to kind of come out of the painting. So I, I've got the sketch that has all these very like structured lines. So um, that's just kind of the way that I paint, and then what I want to get across is this kind of weight. There's so much weight happening in this mouth, so I really want to bring that forward. So, all right. So first off, I'm going to put a layer of beeswax on top of this. So I want to kind of just take take this, it goes right over top of it, just nice and smooth. I want to preserve that drawing a bit and kind of almost like inlay it into the wood so I'm not smudging it around all the time. So after I do that, I now have to take this bad boy. Um, this is a heat gun. So from here, I'm gonna heat up the surface. So you ain't gonna hear me for a second. So hopefully you can see it getting like pretty, you can see where it's, the wax is melting a bit. And it's also making the sketch look darker because it kind of saturates the wood. All right, so that's that for now. Um, so now you can kind of see, it, th this is a bit of me like trying to do a pet portrait, but it's also me just teaching you about encaustic a bit. So I'm sorry if it takes me a little bit to actually get to the painting. But, so now that I put that layer on there, there's this kind of layer over top of the sketch that I can touch now, because that's already dry because of the, the beeswax dries that quickly um, but the cool thing is so I can show you so if for some reason I want to scrape off some of the beeswax that I've put on there I can take this tool and you can kind of see it creates like like that's just the beeswax right there by itself so I can take that and put it back in my palette and reuse it so if I if I even if I put a color on here and I want to take it off if I don't like it you can reuse the color again that's like the really cool thing about encaustic is that you're just able to to go back into things um, scrape it off um, start over come back down to the sketch if you want and um, which, which is another thing that I love about it all right so I'm gonna start painting a little bit I like this um, I'm gonna just talk about the, the photo here 
we have this like pinkish color that I'm seeing and I kind of like that maybe to show through a bit more there's also these really pretty like blues and, and purples and stuff happening in the shadows so I'm really gonna emphasize that too um, all right here we go so let's see so yeah this brush was completely hard before so like you can see I'll show you these brushes they're they're like they, they look like they're just like no good anymore but it's actually once you heat them back up they'll they'll work completely fine it's like uh, I'm a messy artist so I always hated uh, cleaning my brushes in college so it definitely works for me I'm gonna do a little bit of layering here and so I can, if I want to make my paint more transparent, I'll add more beeswax, if that makes sense. Because that's like the transparent medium there. Alright, so... There we go. I'm just going to kind of do this everywhere. And you can still see the sketch underneath, so that's cool. Sometimes if I put it on too opaque, then I can't really see anything. Here's a good spot to start now. I like having layer B like this color, this underlaying color underneath the whole thing so that, you know, the painting sometimes vibrates a little bit. It kind of gives it a little more energy. Um, it seems a little more cohesive. So yeah, it's just like a, like an underpainting or like a, under, like a wash under it, over it. Hey everybody, sorry if I'm missing your comments, I'm already bad at that, but I'm just trying to multitask here. <clears throat> so yeah, for new people that are coming, this is all like encaustic, um, so beeswax and oil paint mixed together. Um, and a lot of times, so when I do this layer, so I have that layer there. Um, you take your the heat gun to mend the layers together. So if you if you paint layer and layer and layer and layer without doing this, then the the paint can flake off. So this is just like something every couple layers I like to do is not melt it all the way down, but just try to fuse. You're fusing the layers together. So you see there, it's not like melting completely. Everything's pretty much stayed the same. But watch if I like spend a lot of time over here. You can melt all that down, which is cool. I mean, it creates a cool effect, so. Um, it just depends on what, what you're using it for. Um, you just have to be careful for if I'm, for the way I'm doing it to not go too crazy with that. So now, because of that heat gun, it is a little bit, needs to dry just a little bit longer than that. But this stuff is pretty dry. <clears throat> All right. So cool thing. I'll come back in. I like, there's some cool shadows and stuff like here I want to get back, so I'm going to take my scraping tool and get back a little bit of that just so I can see what's happening under there. I more so just want the pink to kind of be like showing through everything, but right now there's some details that I'm missing, so I'm going to bring those just back just a little bit. A lot of it will be, I mean, I'm okay showing the sketch like through the, the painting so that, you know, people can see the sketch underneath. But um, right now at this point, I'm still trying to figure out everything on here. It's fun. 
So yeah, all that all that paint I just scraped off goes right back in there, and then I can reuse it. It's pretty cool. All right, so that's getting pretty close to being ready to paint. So I have like a ton of brushes, like a pair of them. This isn't even like a fourth of my brushes. So a lot of times for like certain colors, I'll use a certain brush, you know what I mean? So they look like they're just destroyed, but I could I definitely get all these back and use them if I wanted to. All right, so now that I've got the base kind of going on. I want to start working in getting these shadows. I really want to, I want to make it almost look like it's kind of coming out of that pink color. So um, I'll be going back and forth between the shadows that I'm doing it. And so I'll start trying to just start trying to paint here. And I have this little piece here so I can uh, just dab like anything, get extra paint off if I want. Yeah, so all that dry, already dry. It's quicker than uh, acrylic. Try not to go too dark. I don't know how dark I'm going to go, so I'm just going to kind of ease into it start building up layers and it'll help it kind of just you're like almost working in little washes or something you know I actually just got a dog um, last week, I believe. So yeah, last week, uh, right before everything happened with the coronavirus and all that, uh, me and my wife got a puppy. So we have a little corgi now. Um, my parents and I had corgis. Um, my parents still have corgis. and. Um, so they're they're really fun little dogs, but it's definitely different uh, having a puppy. I've never had a puppy before. Show us your corgi. He is. I know that's what you guys really want is just for me to play with the dog. I get it, Tom. Um, yeah, he's upstairs right now. Maybe at one point I'll get him. I like to like exaggerate colors a lot. So when I'm looking at references, I try to see the colors, you know, like how can I emphasize the colors or how can I, a lot of it comes from the photograph, honestly. When I see a, the, the right picture, it uh, kind of inspires a certain color or the type of dog too also inspires like a certain color. Thank you, Kiko. Appreciate that. 
<clears throat> Maybe at the next convention I should just draw everyone as dogs. You know, do dog paintings. Tom, Farachi, you'd make a great dog. Yep, so I'm just blocking in all these shapes, trying to find the structure. That's mainly what's happening right now. I'm just trying to find the structure. I need to loosen up a little bit. I haven't painted yet today, so. I'm, right now, I'm mainly just trying to teach my dog how to how to like go to the bathroom outside and potty train him and so it's it's a weird time right now for a lot of reasons but yeah if anyone has any questions or anything feel free to ask them A lot of this is just me kind of painting, so if you have anything specific you want to know about encaustic, if, if I can answer it, I will definitely try. I'll do this too to sometimes the layers start getting a little choppy for me like to paint on so I like like to come back in and use this to almost wipe the the excess off so I get like a little smoother of a surface even though it still has the look of the texture Hey everyone, what is the pre-sketch made from? Um, do you mean the, like what it's on? It's on wood panel. Um, and yeah, I, ju I just do like pencil. I just put a, you know, I can do color pencil. You can do that underneath. Um, but yeah, it's on a wood panel. You can get them at like Michael's or any type of like art supply store you can get them from there um ooh, who are some of your art idols so that's a good question um so probably one of my biggest i actually have a photo of it's like a reference photo i like to keep around i'll show you da -da -da. lucian freud He's probably one of my biggest, like, all-time favorite painters in the world. Um, something that, in school, that was always inspiring, how he was able to capture. He was, like, kind of a caricature artist without even knowing it. Um, but he just really was good at likeness and really capturing, like, light. I just love the way he did, does light. 
So that's probably my biggest um, art idol. Um, I'm get a little darker in here. I see that. I know I'm gonna get real dark in this shadow here. And the, the cool thing is about this, like, I tried, like, you think about it, just go into it, if you're going to do this, go into it without, like, any fear. Don't be afraid to, like, screw it up. Like, this is really, like, fun. You know, you can just, like, mess it up. And so, I don't like that mark. Okay, cool, whatever. Scrape it off. Like, it's no big deal. So... Anyone that's like interested in trying this, I definitely think like just try to go into it without being too afraid by it because it's it's new and it's weird. I actually got to see uh, some of um, um, Lucian Freud's work when I was in uh, Rome not too long ago. It was really cool. Yeah, um, it's a uh, hot wax and oil paint mixed together. So. Yeah, all this over here for anyone that's new watching, all this on the right here is a, this is like a griddle that you make, typically make pancakes on. But I have these little metal tins with, uh, with beeswax and oil paint mixed together. So you get really like this cool little texture thing going on. these little uh, these little clips that you hang your clothes bring something closer because it's hot you know um, good question about the uh, is there any other purposes for using caustic instead of uh, other more well-known media um, other than the way I like to do it yeah so besides doing this like you can use it for collage so and um transfer so i'm gonna bring and show you like a, a painting that i'm just i'm working on too so right here if you can see up close that's all text so you're able to because it's beeswax you're able to use uh to do transfers onto it um, you can inlay into it. Um, you could even put pieces of paper straight on it um, and then cover it with wax. You can take, you can make little like inlays with like, uh, sometimes people use leaves and you can press leaves into them and then you get like this cool like cut out of a leaf. So there's, there's a lot you can do. I definitely would recommend checking out like other people's um, videos on it or looking at a book about encaustic because the way I do it and the way like many other people do it are completely do different ways. So um, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. <clears throat> um, how do I wash my brushes? Um, I don't. Does that answer your question, CC? Good question, CC. No, you, you can wash them. I just don't. Um, so you can take like, I, forget, I, I honestly have never done it. I've never washed my brushes. So after this, I'll just let that sit there and it'll dry and I can use it the next day. So for people that hate cleaning their brushes, 
and this is where it's at. <laughs> um, no, um, so sometimes I'll pre-mix my colors for the, each painting, but a lot of times I actually am just on the fly changing the colors that I already had in here. Because, um, here, one second. So when they dry, when the little, like these guys over here dry, it's just like this. It's like a, like a little like wax hockey puck inside there. So when I put it on there, it'll heat it up. Um, and then I can change the color if I want to, or I can dump it out. So sometimes after a while, the colors will get muddy or something like that. So I end up just tossing it, but um, most of the time I just like augment it somehow or tweak it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't uh, use any turpentine or anything. I just wipe the brush in between if I'm going to like, like here. I have a change the color. I just do that. So I kind of want to make this one a little more bluey and a little lighter. So I'm going to drop in a little bit. And mix it and you got kind of this kind of gray there's like this little gray highlight thing happening in his nose so I'm gonna try to Starting to find the highlights in there, in the shadows, so that's kind of cool that there's these like, you don't want to go too bright because it's still the shadow, like that's still much brighter than that, so I want to, I still want to keep, keep them somewhat dark. time on a painting that size um, probably I mean I, I I'll do a, a day or something on this probably um, in a pinch I can probably maybe knock out two in a day um, so that's I mean if I you know at Isca I did a I think three encaustic pieces, so um, one year, so that kind of shows you a little bit. I But I paint fast, like I, I just like typically just keep moving, I like just the brush to keep going. So it's like even, even like, you know, talking and stuff like that can sometimes you know, slow down the, everything, but you know, that's, it's fine for today or whatever, but because I am moving a little slow right now, but. Um, do you paint traditionally almost every day, Kiko? Um, yeah, um, kind of do, yeah. Um, seems like lately. Lately, I've been, you know, just between commissions and then if I'm not working on a commission, I have like studio pieces, um, so yeah, I've been I've been doing a lot of uh, traditional stuff lately. I actually haven't been doing much digital stuff really. I I, uh, I my iPad Pro, my f first one I got, kind of finally died, so I had to get a new one. Um, so I was out of commission there for a bit for digital, 
but um, now I got a, I got a new one. So, but I this is the my preferred way to work is in this over acrylic, over oil, over anything. This is just the way that I really really love working. Yeah, starting to get these like really pretty little purples and stuff happening in the in the mouth. And I love these little jowl things. These little bumps and dimples in, in the mouth. Those are really fun. it in terms of blending how is blending done um so it's really like kind of weird to, to blend you almost have to do it in layers um and then also using like this tool along with a brush you can kind of blend there's some ways so like you could literally take this the the heat gun here if you if you're very careful with the heat of it and not try to to melt everything down you could use the heat gun with the brush and kind of blend things together a little bit but honestly that's I don't really like to do it that way but you can you could definitely do that if you wanted um, but yeah so blending more so in on layers on top of each other and then s scraping off stuff that you don't like or whatever so I'm like oh that marks a little weird you know you can kind of like scrub some stuff and let some of the layers like start to blend together when you start scraping them like that. That's a fun sound. Alright, we need to get darker. I just love this picture though. I saw Natalie posted it and I'm like, okay. You got it, Natalie. Natalie and I, Natalie Yeckley, for those who don't know, um, we uh, started doing caricatures together um, at Cedar Point back in 2008, 2007, something like that. So we were both, that was our both first year. And then the following year, I think, is when Tom Faraci came to Cedar Point, and uh, that's where we got to be friends. So yeah, I'm both uh, we're both Commons kids. Look, Bo, I'm painting your dog again. I'm not going to give it to you this time. I'm just kidding. This is not your dog. 
Bo, uh, I did a painting of Bo Hubford's dog once, and then somebody else bought it. So, and then I told them that I was going to give it to them, but someone bought it. So I try. I probably shouldn't have just shouldn't have told him that. But he got over it. I got him. I gave him a painting. I finally did one for him. So yeah, during this time, um, during like the this whole pandemic and all the social distancing and stuff like that, yeah, I've been I've been pretty much working down here or working on. Um, I have this commission I'm doing for somebody that's like a it's like a Kobe Bryant um, commission, so I'm working on that too. Um, so at least I have some like projects that need to get done, and then I'm I'm doing some commissions as well for like pets. So. Trying to, trying to still paint every day. Thanks, Bo. Yeah, I like, I really like doing that one. Well, your dog has such a good face too. I was like, all right, I'll do another one. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this one here for Natalie. I'm just like, it's just asking for me to paint it, you know. I think. So yeah, I kind of like, you can see like I, I move a couple colors together over here. Like this is just the griddle itself. It's hot and I'm just like mixing some colors on the side here. So if it's not exactly the color I need in, in the, the little containers, I have to like tweak it and make my own. Hey Bob, what's up? All right. come up with something like the pink is really showing through really like I like what's happening right there with the pink and right in here but yeah I'm gonna have to, to come up with a different color for in here to kind of uh, to, to make it not so pink everywhere but I still want it to show through but
<laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to play some golf here soon too. So I kind of like, I kind of like how that other ear over here you don't see. So I really like, there's like this thing that I like to play with and it's this kind of line between uh, abstraction and like representational kind of painting. So I'm, I'm sometimes I'll, I'll go back in after and I'll abstract some stuff like put a mark somewhere it shouldn't go. And then it, and then it just kind of, uh, I don't know, creates like this kind of, cool feeling of like the the animal coming out of the paint kind of thing so I, I, I dig that oh yeah thank you CC yeah it's um yep oil oil paint and um, and beeswax mixed together I should have played music or something. Yeah, so it's starting to happen. You can, this seems brighter now that I added that other color in there. You know, it's not exact, but I'm that's okay with me. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be able to go on over top of it and tweak it or change the color if I want. So, if it's not exact right color right now, it's mostly I just like I want to get some paint like I want the, to get some paint on there and then I can I know I'll be able to figure it out <laughs> you know it's just uh, it's just about actually moving your your brush making decisions and then you can go and change those decisions you know what I mean or add on top of them so I try that's, that's the, the best way to paint I feel just to keep going, just keep moving, keep moving forward. This is the thing that happens. I'll be like moving really good for a while and then I can't find any of the oil paint that I want to find. Shit. Oh, there it is. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna tweak that pink color a little bit and just uh, to lighten it up. There's some areas in here that I'm like liking start adding a little bit of highlight to make it come out a little bit more. I, 
I usually paint with the office or something going on in the background. Obviously, if you're at any ISCA convention, you know that Kev Jackson and I will be listening to the office every single year. It's like a tradition. But I honestly, I haven't watched it in a minute now. But so I'll play like movies and stuff. I don't really listen to music too much when I work. I just have TV going or something. Yeah, that's nice. Um, let's see. Hey, Eric. Um, I haven't said hi yet. Do you buy colors pre-mixed or do you mix them in the wax yourself? Um, so you can buy pre-mixed um, colors that are encaustic, but they're way too expensive. Like I've, I've, I've done it once and it wasn't worth it. I, I can promise you. I just take, I just have, you know, all like all these gambling, Winsor Newton, oil paint, really any oil paint. And you can mix it in with the beeswax right in the tins right over here. So you can make any color you want that way. So you don't, I don't really recommend going out to buy unless there's some random cool color or something that is looks like you want to like instead of making it I guess but, and let's see it's just starting to pop in a little bit of highlights just finding the planes and the forms just trying to be subtle and soft with it I just love this I love like this here it goes down and then it because it's on something there's just this whole flap it's just like like a, like if you put pudding or something on, on a table it just like it's starting to spread out it's just like so funny so I'll kind of emphasize that a little bit maybe This is why I love painting dogs, though. <clears throat> For a while, it was like a weird thing. Like, I wasn't sure if, like, you know, I went to school. It went to, had, like, a fine art school. Um, and I don't know what, maybe it was just my own thing. If I, I felt like if I was doing, like, pet portraits or something, I was kind of, like, selling out or something. But honestly, it's just like so much fun to just paint them. So I've kind of just some leaning into it now. I just like it. <laughs> it's just like relaxing and I don't, I'm not trying to make any big statement or anything. It's just like a fun, fun way to paint and just worry about the likeness. So it's a lot of, it's a lot like caricature in that way, you know? Even it's a portrait or whatever, it's kind of, I mean, it's got some character in it, but um, it's just about, you know, creating the feeling of it, of the dog, and taking some liberties with, you know, my painting style, you know what I mean? Um, the good ratio for, um, it really depends. So like if you're wanting to do, um, like more transparent stuff, you, you're going to want a more wax to oil paint, but you also have the, because it's wax, it'll end up getting kind of waxy looking like, um, almost kind of frosty if you're just using it that way so I use a lot of oil paint mixed in so um, I don't really know what the good ratio would be to say honestly I just uh, I'm, I'm eyeballing it every time and still to where it's a little opaque or if it's a little so it just depends on what I want to do so the initial like layers on top of the sketch were very transparent but now I'm starting to get more opaque and just creating like, you know, these kind of, these shapes. Yeah. 
and I'll, I'll try to post more stuff too, like on Instagram. I'm gonna, I wanna get better about doing like live stuff and uh, trying to keep a little more engaged now with with people. I think I'm really bad at that usually. Uh, but now since it's like my only way to talk to people, I'm like, okay, I need to start talking to people um, or posting stuff more. And so I'll, I'll be doing that more. So if you're on my Instagram, uh, Derek underscore T underscore Brennan. Have you ever tried to recreate this digitally? Like the texture? Um, I have actually there if you if you look on my Instagram maybe I'll post it in the th this thread but there I think uh, it was like uh, one of the newer art apps that have come out recently because um, I was using procreate and that was good but there's this one app I really forget the name um, but it's like the paint actually looks like it has three-dimensional qualities about it so um, I was playing with that and I did a piece and I was like, yeah, it looks pretty close to the way that, uh, the way I would, you know, paint it if I were to do it this way, so. But I, there is a difference though in my work digitally versus my work here. Um, and you can see that, like, I'm, I, I like to render a little bit more when I'm, um, working digitally. I, I wish I could just stay super loose like I do here, but I just kind of start zooming in and zooming in and, and kind of get sucked into that. <sighs> so, okay, so I really want to start making this thing kind of come to life a little more there's this cool I like I like the blue kind of on the outside I'm gonna bring that into the painting now um, it, as a background I'll try to let the pink show through a little bit but I think I'm gonna try the blue to see if it's gonna look good or not don't know if it's too bright or not I'm gonna try to green it down a little bit Yeah, art set. That's the one you're talking about? Yeah. Um, thanks for naming that. Um, yeah, that's the one I, I tried, and uh, man, I was playing with it. I, I just loved how that the paintbrushes worked on there. I really haven't done much with it since. I really like Procreate in general when it comes to digital painting, but the little experience I had with that one was cool. Art set. That's too much. That's too much. All right. Yeah, art set. Dad, yeah, I think uh, Pippin probably is because I originally was going to, but um, I. I haven't found the right photo yet. Our dog's name is Pippin, by the way, for people that don't know. It's not just from Lord of the Rings. All right, let's do this and see if this is going to look good or not. thing is like, I kind of like that this line happening because 
I feel without, if I just were to make the same color all the way around, I feel like it would look weird. It would like his float, his head's just floating. But I think this way, if I, if I were to make a, like a different color under here, I can really uh, make it feel like his head is sitting on something. Kind of like a little shelf. <clears throat> Art Rage, huh? I'll have to check that out. Oh, I didn't realize that about the... So now I'm just trying to frame the, the face here a bit. It's fun to sometimes just like make like, you know, a straight line out of something like that. Create like almost like this like really sharp edged contour. I think that could be kind of cool for this. To like emphasize some sh like the, that flatness there. And then maybe I'll do like somewhat of this flatness here, maybe. keep this the same color or if I should I don't know, do it. I need it lighter. Um, I swear every time I'm losing, I'm, I misplace my white again. Probably need to um, to fuse the layers together again because uh, it's starting to. I've done a couple layers of painting, so I need to take the heat gun to it and do a little fusion. So yeah, I actually so I learned about this when I was in college. Um, it uh, was a contemporary concepts course, in, um, and it was all on encaustic. So that's where I started and how I learned about it. Um, and it was, I think, my sophomore or junior year where I learned about it. And that's, uh, that's how it all started, how it all began. I've been doing it probably now eight years or so. Now I need to I want to darken up an area a little bit. I like there's some like shadow. I like I want to create a little more shadow. using the layers together now um, I've, I've kind of started painting quite a bit on here so I'm gonna fuse them a little bit
you probably can't see very well from uh, this angle but when I do that I can see it from the, the light hitting on top of it um, when when uh, it's starting to get wet so it, that means when when it's starting to get heat up again um, I, I want it just to get wet but not enough to melt the whole thing <clears throat> so it's it's a little warm but it's it's not too too warm that I'm going to scrape everything off when I do this. So I'm going to go in and kind of, this helps blend some things together too. And you can still see the sketch in a lot of this, so um, I still like that. I still want to let the sketch kind of shine through love the process so I, I think it's all right to show the process in the in the painting I might want to work with a little bit smaller of a brush now because there's a there's a couple little adjustments I need to do most of my brushes are flat that's like the kind that I really like to use it's like almost like making little like pixels I think of it that way so I use flat brushes quite a bit And the thing too with the brushes um, to do this you need like a, a real haired brush not like a synthetic or anything like that because the synthetic brushes can like uh, the won't work really well with it uh, I've tried it before but um, something about like the synthetic hairs and the and the wax just it's doesn't work well so you, I use like a hog hair or some type of brush like that something real get in there you see the back of my head there Jen, my mom. Um, let's see. Jen is upstairs working on work. So she's working from home now. We've kind of turned our living room into a little workstation. So, and when I'm not working on acoustic stuff, I've been working up there too. So it's kind of been nice.
So in these shadows, like, I need to get that darker in there. It's too light right now. And that highlight over here gets a little brighter, so I think I'm gonna pop that with a little, a little more blue. So use some of the blue that I'm using in the, the background, a little, maybe a little white to it. See that how that just starts to, to form that shape a little bit better. Hey Tom, uh, Farachi, uh, what time do you want me to work on this for? I don't know how long is the demonstration supposed to go, if it matters or if there's like a time limit, because I have no idea how long I've been at it. So for Sergio's question, does the wax make it any easier to overlay different colors without picking up what's underneath like acrylics? Um, I think it, it'll depend on how opaque it is, really. If you're working more opaque, I think you really won't see too much of that. But you can choose to if you want. You know, I mean, I, I like like picking up some of the stuff underneath um, in in some of these pieces like this. But I don't know. Not 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 quite sure how to answer that one. Sorry. Stop by eight. Okay. <laughs> Painting any more murals in the future? Ooh. Yeah, so uh, for those that don't know, uh, I also do murals. Um, I actually have one coming in Sandusky in the spring, uh, So, but that's kind of maybe tentative on everything that's going on right now. Um, it'll, it'll happen, it's just, uh, I don't know. 
I'm just not sure about all that yet. But yeah, I'll be doing one, an outdoor mural in uh, the city of Sandusky. Um, and then I have a couple other projects too that, um, that I can't talk about exactly yet. But yeah, still going. I've been doing a lot of stuff for the uh, Noble Axes uh, um, uh, axe throwing bar. So you can go in Sandusky, there's a, this axe throwing bar and uh, I've done um, a couple Viking themed murals there, which are which has been like so much fun. Um, <laughs> it's really like I, I wasn't I never really thought about murals when I was in college. I didn't really think of that as like a viable option, but man, they're they're a lot of fun. Um, you really get to uh, to see your work in a different way. In a public space, um, you're almost, in some ways, making like a little landmark in some of these towns. Like I have these, I have three large murals in Fostoria, Ohio, which are like, um, some of them are like 60 feet wide or something. Um, so it's it's really crazy to see something like that, like. Uh, see your work that large. I have to literally like use like a, a bucket like lift and like a scissor lift to get up on you know um, So it, it's pretty cool. It's fun for any of those that uh, haven't done it before it's um, You should try it Especially if you're like a painter or even if you're like a graphic designer. I think you could come up with like a really cool um outdoor graphic and then you can paint it like almost it doesn't have to be painterly sometimes the mirrors I've done have been more uh, simple flat colors but I think you should give it a try it's fun um, so I, I just use like this outdoor um, acrylic based uh, mural paint. There's a company in California called Nova Color um, and they have these uh, these paints that are like super vibrant and then they, they, they last long outside so um, they're just able to, to withstand some of the elements better than you know the paints that you would buy you know at um, Lowe's or something you know but yeah, this is no Nova Color, Nova Color uh, paint is what I use. They last a long time too because you don't like you don't need a lot of it like to tint something specifically. I've had some of the same colors for a long time. They're expensive. Paints, you know, it's really expensive, but um, definitely well worth it. getting there we're getting starting to find some of the features Exactly there. I know. I just know it's like an acrylic base. I don't really know too much beyond that. They have a lot. Of, if you go look on their website, they have like this whole like facts about Nova Color thing that you can just learn a ton about. When I was first starting doing murals, uh, I was you know calling them even and asking questions like, you know like when you're doing a mural for the first time, it's just like a bit uh 
it was a bit of unknown <laughs> and it was kind of scary to, to do something that large you know something that's 25 feet tall and you're like I haven't done that before but you know um, I, I actually one of the things that helped a lot too was using a projector um, so doing your whole drawing planning everything out to like almost the T of what you want it to look like at the end and then projecting that drawing onto the wall um, that was definitely a big help because um, I think that took some of the um, like a fear would be like to be like distorted you know from that far away you're not used to working that large your brain can't like <laughs> process that completely so Weird question, how do you feel about being sort of an opener for Hoda today? Um, yeah, that, uh, that's crazy. <laughs> um, I actually, I didn't even think of it like that. Um, that's so cool. Um, he is, I mean, talk about like one of the coolest people, like, and so nice, so humble. Um, he was at this last convention. I got to talk to him a lot. He came over and we just sit and talk about art and he'd uh, come bother me when I'm trying to paint, as he said. <laughs> um, but I did that workshop with him too, which is fun. Um, the, the OTA workshop, um, that was a good time. Um, it's just, it's, it's really great to watching that person that guy's just like incredible painter, and uh, so it's really cool um, being his opener today. Uh, it's definitely making me feel like I should have done a better painting. <laughs> contrast going I think so I'm, I'm trying to try and get my highlights just a little bit brighter a lot of people when they're watching like your videos do you like paint and stuff too because that's what I've been doing well hello Natalie you see who I'm painting Tom, she didn't come here to see you. Natalie just recently did a, a commission for me. She did a, a painting of my cat. It was really awesome. And I have it in like this like whole animal collage of uh, from different artists I have now. like a wall like a gallery style kind of wall feature in our dining room <laughs> god damn it of course my mom messaged you about this That's, that's a good point, Tom. I am so sorry. There's still time. There's still time. Also get cooler looking dogs, Tom. Maybe, maybe how about that? I'm just kidding. Maggie is cute.
I love working in like these like purples and blues. So you can probably see that. So a lot of my shadows end up going like a little more purple, typically. I don't know why. I just like like finding that color. So another cool thing, um, sometimes I'll take, if I can find it, um, I sketch on top of it sometimes with like, like a, with a China marker. Um, I don't know if I have it. If not, that's okay. But anyway. Yeah, so, so sometimes you, you can take like crayons or you can take sometimes colored pencil or any wax kind of base thing and sketch over top of your painting. Um, so I'm gonna... There's like this right in the inside of the eye right there is kind of like really, uh, really red. So I kind of want to make that happen in there. <laughs> oh man, COVID marker, son of a bitch. So also underneath or over top of my um, my griddle, I have like ventilation. So there's actually a hood over here that's any like anything that's it's just like a, a extra precaution. I'm, my my workspace is in a basement, so uh, I would just want them, any fumes or anything like that. I don't want to be breathing in. Sometimes if you get this too hot, it'll smoke, and you don't want to inhale that. So I just have this. Uh, like a an old um, hood that goes over top of like your stove you know we turned one up my dad um, made this thing that uh, sucks it all out and puts it outside it's pretty cool
Yeah, I'm still working. What time is it? Okay. I'll probably be done soon. <sighs> All right, so I'm probably gonna wrap up pretty shortly. Um, I do wanna show you one more cool thing um, before I sign off. I need to do dinner and I have to spend time with my dog because he's been sad. I think I've been away all day. Not out in the world. I've just been in my studio. <laughs> I'm staying home, don't worry. So I'm going to do a transfer. I'm going to do an encaustic transfer, which is kind of fun. So, I mean, you can kind of see, like, it takes a little while because, I mean, from if you're up close on it, it'll look pretty abstract, I think. But um, from far away, kind of like how you guys are viewing everything, you start to see how it all kind of is working together. Um, starting to look like a dog ish. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little encaustic transfer. So first thing I'll need to do is heat up the wax a little bit. I'm going to, I just have some of these like old magazine clippings. I'm gonna show you how, how it works. I'm gonna pick something that I think will look okay. Or So you see how there's all this blue happening. So I'm gonna use this it's kind of like a darker blue i'm going to take off this red bit and i don't care like when i'm doing transfers and stuff like i don't really do it to like the words are going to transfer backwards anyway um you could just inlay this somewhere if you wanted but i'm going to kind of show you what i'm going to do so i, ha I have like all these i have a stack pile of like old life magazines so, and I just take, do the transfers with them. So I'll show you. While it's hot, I'm gonna take a little piece, put that there, put this piece here. I don't really care. I'm just more, more so just trying to show you how this all works. Um, I usually have like a piece of wax paper, but for this I don't. So uh, you take a little like a burnishing tool or you can take a spoon or something and you press the back of it. To try to press it into the wax. So right now it just like looks like I'm just covering up stuff, but I'm going to take a damp cloth. So. Hold on one second, I will be just right back, so just stay right there. I'm going to get a wet cloth, and then I'm going to take it off. Alright, so I have a wet cloth. So what you do is you're going to rub the back of this. 
to take the paper off and just leave the ink. So you have to get it nice and soaked and then slowly it'll come off. kind of for me it's like another layer and then I can paint on top of that again so it almost like it's got this kind of nostalgic kind of like worn like memory effect like almost like when you see a billboard and then the uh, you know like an old billboard where all the paper and stuff has fallen off and uh, you can see like the uh, the billboards from underneath of it like I, that's the or like if you're on a like an old telephone pole with a bunch of old uh, you know pieces of paper with staples all in it and it just kind of looks like that so I'm gonna kind of bring it up close so kind of see how see the text is just like put onto the wax now and then you can put wax on top of that you can scrape it off so if I if I didn't like how that worked you know if for some reason I'm like oh that abstracted it too much I didn't like it um, take this tool and you can scrape it all off so that's a cool thing too, is that so you, nothing's like permanent. You can try things without really ru ruining anything. So if I just wanna like let some of it show through or something, I don't like how much it shows right in that pink, so I kinda take some of it out. But that's basically how that process works. All right, well, I think that is going to be it. Um, let me show you a little bit of my studio real quick so you can see what else I have going on. Um, so here, this is the, the hood I was talking about. So my dad made this. And then there's a fan in there. And it sucks it out through that and shoots it outside. My dad also made this really awesome easel. I wasn't using it because I needed something that wasn't completely vertical. But, you see these? You can adjust, adjust these up and down. So it's like a, a wall easel that can go to any size of painting I want. And also slides, it's on a, you can move it. So that's pretty fun. But yeah, so that's about it. This is, uh, for those that like uh, had a pack of tans, pack of tans is no longer a thing, but this was one of the fixtures that they were selling. It was 20 bucks for this thing. And now I hold all my, my old brushes in there. But yep, so that's it. That's my, that's my demonstration. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming out, um, watching. It's, it's, it's been really fun. Um, Iska is so awesome for doing this. I think it's like, we have such a great organization. Um, I have so many friends, like literally all my best friends have come from, from Iska. So um, really appreciate you guys watching and uh, hope you learned a little about encaustic and maybe you try it out sometime. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to message me if you have any more information or if you need more inf information all right thanks guys